Hey, Daddy, are you a CG person? Well, look at my lips. Oh. <laughs> I think my favorite like effect overall from this whole video are the dancing robots. Watching it here, they didn't replace a lot of these faces. <laughs> so these underwater shots are something I kind of want to talk about because a lot of people like were kind of fooled. I mean, really, all we did was just. Hi, welcome back to another episode of VFX Artist React. Today we are joined by my close friend Mike, aka Mike Diva, here is an acclaimed music video director. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. I'm yeah. very honored. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so I started doing a lot of VFX work myself for my videos, mostly out of necessity, a lot of YouTube stuff. I did like this video, Dubstep Guns, with you guys. A lot of it was just me kind of learning the program and kind of just doing what I had to do to get the dumb stuff in my head out into the world. And now I'm mostly focused on directing, but it really helps to come from the visual effects background to really fully be able to direct for that sort of thing. <laughs> All right, what's the first thing we're looking at here? For those of you who don't know, Mike recently directed the Panini music video for Lil Nas X. <laughs> Lil Nas X. Pretty sure the whitest anybody has ever said that. It was, it was intentional. We had five days to, from like getting the job to like shooting the video. I literally had to shoot a previs to kind of act out the whole video and make sure that it works and like the concept works. The best way I like to do it is by doing what I call a crapomatic, which you guys have messed with before as well. But it's basically a storyboard that you just shot on your phone just to kind of give the general idea of what to expect, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's really good for figuring out like exactly what works in the shot, what doesn't, framing, action, basically directing the whole video before I direct the video and then that way I know exactly what cuts together and like what doesn't. Wow, look at that. <laughs> this is pretty good. Running from the holograms. We use a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of Avengers action figures there. <laughs> wow. We literally got these action figures for previous purposes and there's me uh, <laughs> reacting, reacting to my dancing. <laughs> <laughs> You're not much of a performer at 2 a.m., you know? It's, dancing wasn't that bad. <laughs> we didn't know the lyrics, so Josh, <laughs> Josh was like trying to read them off his phone. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, you're like, what? Are you reading off your phone? <laughs> <laughs> Panini smiles. We were putting together this video at 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, the day it was due, the day it was like pretty much uploaded. And oh, wait, um, okay. Yeah, it was one of those. Like, was, <laughs> there's like literally like so many VFX shots in every single shot. We worked with the VFX house chimney to to do this, but also I had my own team on the side that was doing stuff like this car shot and all the window replacement and stuff like that. But if we back up to that shot of her walking up to the car, this is one of the shots that when I received it at 3.30 in the morning, I noticed that the layer that she was on was transparent and you could see the car landing in front of her head. Oh, oh no. no. And, uh, it Someone was... accidentally left the opacity of her layer yes. at like 70% yes. or even like just 98%, just enough that you could see the car going through your head. Yeah, oh, I've, I've yeah. been there. I've seen that in my own final renders and I'm just like, no, gotta and be And there rendered. was nothing I could do. I literally just had to boost the contrast a ton <laughs> so that you couldn't tell but like it's still technically the messed up shot but like so this shot right here there are so many neon light type effects in the shot how many of those are practical like I see some stuff like a sign there like a little smiley face sign those are the, the right. smiley face signs are like the only real signs in this scene and then like those purple neon bars in the background for a scene like this what I did was I motion tracked the scene in after effects and I had a bunch Classic. of different elements made and I placed everything in the scene where I wanted it you know so I had a bunch of fake brands made, placed them in the scene, and then I gave them to the VFX house and went, do this, but better. And then for this stuff, I was literally like animating and compositing the little Nas hologram effects like the morning of, truly hours before it got released. <laughs> So wire work sucks and I hate it. <laughs> That's my takeaway from this. So for this scene, she couldn't actually wear the backpack because like oh. it got caught up in with the wire work. So that's 100% CG backpack right there. Wow. <laughs> we literally had like black gaff tape. That was, <laughs> that's just <laughs> that black, tape, it's on just black tape on her shoulders. Wow. And they were like, that's ah, good enough. So Mike, as you know, this show is called VFX Artists React to Bad and Great CGI. Yes. We haven't talked about any bad CGI yet. We haven't. I have one for you, though. Clue from Tron Legacy. Look at you, man. 
Look at the size again. I feel like this kind of touches upon some of the kind of Uncanny Valley stuff that you guys have talked about before, mm -hmm. and the tech just like not quite being there yet. But what's interesting with this one is that like I feel like it was kind of that in between, right? But, but I feel this like is, this was also like ten years ago that they were making this, right? That big reveal. <laughs> I bet you they thought this was gonna be like an oh shit moment. Like, oh. Little Even his head bottle. wobble. His head feels like it's got like no <laughs> weight to it. I feel like this is right up your alley, Mike, because of all like the neon lights and whatnot. Like, yeah. like light designs, you know? Well, th this movie was directed by a designer. Not in the cards. Kind of got the PlayStation face going on. He's got Polar Express face. I mean, <laughs> Polar Express. I wouldn't say that. I he think it polarized. actually doesn't look that bad. I think the lighting helps a lot. Yes. But the moment he starts talking, the that's moving. every time, anytime a CG face starts talking, it falls apart instantly. I'm not your father, Sam. Now, I couldn't be in there all the time, so. Man, it's, it kind of does stand out though. Oh, now, yeah, the side profile. Now he looks, there's something about his profile. Like it just doesn't Yeah, it's like feel weirdly right. smooth. The kid's even like, what the f is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing a pretty good job of like making him very edge lit. And so yeah. every most of his face facing the camera is in shadow. So you're it not helps. really seeing too many details there. It sells enough, yeah. But the shot, when he opens the door and turns around, <laughs> it all falls apart. <laughs> Wait, Daddy, are you a CG person? Well, look at my lips. Like, you have to tighten your top lip a little bit, like, mm -hmm. and get mm. bridges. Well, <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> I'm going to go to the arcade. I'll see you later. <laughs> Nico, do you know what exactly is wrong with his skin in that shot, though? Yeah, if I think I do, actually. It is it the plastic look? Like, I mean, what's going on here? The pores don't stretch. You're missing out on the micro details of the surface, specifically the stubble and the facets of the skin. So, you know how snow sparkles? Of course. Of course. Everybody knows how snow sparkles, right? Yeah, it's the magic Walking of Christmas. It's, smark it's all sparkly. And on your face, all your pores are reflecting light here and there. Like, there are straight up sparkles on your cheek. There is not really any of that on his skin. And yeah, they have like a bump map to kind of like break up the reflections. Outside of just your skin being rough and having surface detail, your skin also has hair on it. And maybe they're trying to do the hair, but whatever they're doing here is not working. And this is a, this is a great example. If you look at Thanos from Avengers, he has stubble on his chin. And these little bits of hair that are sticking out are catching the light and casting shadow. And even when you're not on your beard area, even on the rest of your face, you still have hair on your face. Like you have mm. peach fuzz on your cheeks. These hairs are all missing because that's an extra million and millions of millions of polygons. We're always on the same team. Now, what about the subsurface scattering aspect? Because, you know, the amount of transparency actually varies depending on where your skin is located. You're so definitely it's like, right. You know, here on the cheeks, it's a little bit thicker versus like right over the eyebrow or over the nose, it's a little bit thinner. But it's definitely an issue here. Like the tip of his nose, like the cartilage, where the cartilage ends in your nose, you still just have flesh. So that very tip of his nose and the little like line underneath your nose should be like kind of glowing red from the light going through it. It's close, but it's not quite there. I think that's a lot of it, is that you don't have like the redness here and the redness that goes here. And like the basic stuff that they teach you like in art school about painting a human being. It's yeah. like there's that redness that you need. So you have real skin, right? The arms. And the arms are basically in the same spot as the face relative to that light. So if you keep playing here, tell me, in your opinion, do the highlights on his face match the highlights on his arms? No, uh, but his face is closer to the lamp though. Not, look at his bottom right forearm and his face. Yes, yeah, his face is much more lit. It feels like the light source is, the lamp is here, but it feels like the light source on his face is like more like here. And not just that, look at the, the difference in the highlights, the edge light there on his face. There's light wrap on the bottom of his chin. There's like a very pretty strong highlight edge along his entire face, but on his bicep, there isn't that little white line. There's a little bit on his forearm there where his hair on his forearm is catching the light, but not on his skin. There's a clear bright white line on his chin and there's no clear bright white line on his bicep. All of a sudden, the lighting itself feels faked. And you know what? It is. Hold on. Mike, I want you to react to something else here real quick. Okay. Oh. It says artist, and it's all keyframes tracking marks. Dude, and be bezier curves? And bezier curves. My reaction is, I think this is a really cool shirt. <laughs> Quarter digital joggers. Ooh. I actually oh, really excited these. About these are very cool. I would wear the out of these. We've brought back a little bit of a classic design with a twist now. It's an old That's dope. old 8-bit design. So I get to keep these. Yes. Sick. Thank you, Corridor Digital. Dude, I don't even have those joggers. Ran. Shut up. <laughs> Bash Brothers was my baby of the year, as they say. I there can't even is. do it right. Hold on. There we go. Boom. That's a bash. 
That's a bad. They call me Jose. And I'm Mark. So yeah, I got the opportunity to co-direct this Netflix special. For those who don't know, it's about the Bash Brothers, who were two baseball players <laughs> in the early 90s that I had no idea who they were before getting the opportunity to do this. And I also <laughs> hate baseball. So um, there's that. I kind of took it upon myself to really make this as visually interesting as possible for people that, you know, aren't <laughs> baseball fans. And obviously the rest of the load is carried by Andy Samberg and Akiva Schaffer being hilarious. Walk in the party with my dick in my hand. I love yeah, how you shot I do. this. It's pretty incredible. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I really wanted to do a Hype Williams video, and that was kind of the idea behind this whole thing, was just like, <laughs> really like with each song, because they just dumped all these songs in my lap. We're like, what should we do? And so this one, I had like the energy of like a Hype Williams video, and I just kind of tried to hit like, the kind of sped up, like, like filming them with like the song slowed down and then speeding it up and all that good stuff. And really this is like filming that hallway scene was the moment it hit me and I was like, wow, I really get to like dress up my heroes in funny costumes and like make them do what I want. And like, it was the most surreal thing in the world, like that they were all just on board for this. Such an amazing thing. I actually approached Andy Samberg eight years ago in a sushi restaurant <laughs> and I told him like, just want to say, you're my hero, and keep doing what you're doing. And I shook his hand, and I'll never tell him about that. He still doesn't know to this day that I did that. <laughs> so these underwater shots are something I kind of want to talk about, because a lot of people like were kind of fooled, and they thought that we actually like shot some stuff underwater. I mean, really, all we did was just blow fans at them and had them lay back on apple boxes with a green sheet, and just shot it super slow motion. Uh, and just the, the subtle movement in their hair and stuff like that kind of sells it. So film in slow motion with a very powerful fan. Uh-huh, three and fans. And that can yeah. kind of like help emulate the underwater look. <laughs> oh, oh, fun fact about that dick shot. So he says, whip out my dick on the Jumbotron. And I actually had Peter France buy a CG dick off of... Uh, <laughs> I bought a CG dick off of Turbo Squid. <laughs> And I had him animate like a dick like flopping around. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! And the idea was Peter. the idea was to blur it out. And he like you know he rolled up his sleeves and just, like, it made it work and like made it very realistic. Wait wait wait! wait, wait. Did you use soft body physics or rigid body physics? Ro soft body physics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it looked so good. <laughs> That when you watch the shot, you're like, ugh, did Akiva just really just whip his dick out right there? <laughs> so at the last minute before we turned it into Netflix, oh. I like threw the black bar on it. So you really did just make Peter do that. I made Peter make a dick. <laughs> for no reason. For no reason <laughs> at all. I want to talk about fixing your shortcomings as a director via visual effects. The transitional line in the song is, me and Jose got a smash back to IHOP. And I got this shot on the day, and I never got a shot of the car like pulling up. Oh. And I just completely spaced it on that. I was just in post trying to figure out how to cut these two scenes together. And I was like, well, flying car. <laughs> Unexplained, you never see it again, they never talk about it. It's just, you just, they have a flying car, I guess. And so I made a background plate, I like photoshopped a background plate by smashing together like three different shots that we had. And then literally just bought a, a model car off of a uh, Turbo Squid and modified it. And then boom, it works. Anyways, that's Bash Brothers. Real quick, I know it's not VFX, but what was it like working with Andy and Akiva? It was a dream, man. It was it was like a, co like a combination of like, I'm very nervous and I hope I don't mess this up because again, these guys like, I grew up with these guys like pre-YouTube, kind of like what got me into like doing what I do. And the other part was the stress of, we have four days to shoot six music videos. How do we do that? <laughs> so it was, it was truly the most insane shoot I've ever been on. So there was a day on set where you had me come out to be an extra, but there's a moment where I got to talk to Andy Sandberg. It was just me and him back in Video Village. We were just talking about how great of a director you are. Aww. So Andy Samberg said that you're really good. Aww. That warms my heart. Until he remembers that you, uh... <laughs> Wait, he's that guy from the sushi bar eight years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, f that guy. Also, I want to mention real quick, a lot of our ideas for things to react to come from you guys. So please, leave a comment with a movie, TV show, whatever it is you'd like us to react to, to break it down, to tell you how it's made. All right, let's jump back in.
you guys already did a video where you mentioned Burly Brawl, right? You're talking about Matrix Reloaded. Yes, the classic Matrix Reloaded scene. Well, I love the choreography. The chore and, like, yeah. and in the video, you guys talked about like the good points of it. What do you guys say? Like, like, get it off your chest, I Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the things that don't work in this scene. Oh. There is some really, really great choreography in this scene. There's some great action. But then they do some really, really bizarre, unnatural, unnecessary stuff that I just feel like makes the scene goofy, in my opinion. Right here, what is that move? <laughs> whoa, whoa! I don't know, it's just so <laughs> weird to me, and I feel like it just kind of breaks it. This and the shot of him running over the agent's heads, like, don't, whoop, yeah. It looks weird, but I feel like that's the intent. For them to make it look awkward? <laughs> Not awkward, I mean, it's, it's different. <laughs> I mean, this is just a weird directing choice, I think. It I mean, gets very really Mary Poppins for It gets very really cute. And then there's that, that <clears throat> scene where they, they put the bowling pins getting knocked over. And it goes like full cartoon. An, an actual like bowling pin sound effect. When you're going to be pushing the threshold of what you can do in CG, you have to make sure that you're not just like getting so ridiculous that your design choices and choreography choices in the movie itself are going to ruin that's all what that I, That's work. what I mean, I feel like it breaks it. Kind of like how you guys talk about in Pacific Rim, the difference between Pacific Rim 1 and 2, the camera feels grounded and it mm -hmm. feels like you're, you know, you're, you're getting shots that cameras can feasibly get. And right, that's yeah. why the robots feel huge and real. Also the fact that they slow down moments like this that I feel like the, the CG is not good enough to fully slow down. I mean, the name, specifically the way the cloth moves, like the cloth's weight changes completely. Like you're talking about his, his jacket? Yeah, his coat, like, it, like it feels so much more lightweight and the way it's flowing right there does not sell to me at all. It, it, it works for me, personally. It doesn't for me, and that's because the simulation detail is not high enough for that cloth. I'd agree with that. Look at how many wrinkles are on his right arm there, and now, Look at how many wrinkles smooth. are on his arm there. Yeah. It's all smooth. It's all smooth. It's like the same thing with surface imperfections when you're rendering like glass or anything reflective. You gotta have like something to kind of break it up and make it look a little bit more messy. So that being so smooth is kind of giving it a weird fake look. What you're seeing here is basically the kind of cloth sims you get in like a modern day basketball game on like the PlayStation 4. So Mike, you're like, I could tell. Those weren't CG human beings. Each one of those heads are 100% CG, and they look perfect. They do. Dude, the battle for Middle Earth would have gone so much better if they had this many Elrons around. <laughs> <laughs> Hugo Weaving it had to be like, every once in a while, like the one guy that comes in and punches and his face happens to like be facing the camera in each one of those sequences. It's like five stuntmen, then Hugo Weaving. And like five more stuntmen, and then Hugo Weaving comes running in. Well, that guy, wait, when he grabs his shoulder, go back, go back. Enhance? Oh, that guy on the left is, <laughs> Definitely who that? Hugo. Who that is? <laughs> Who's that boy right there? Going? How about this? Something on the sides. There's Hugo weaving. That guy right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's amazing how much you don't see this in oh, yeah. the actual all movie. All of this is inconsequential. Like, <laughs> it doesn't like, really matter. I, I thought they were all replaced, but watching it here, they didn't replace a lot of these faces. They just left them as is because you can't you tell. Didn't really have and to. I didn't know and that until we're going Hugo through frame by frame. Oh, look at that. There's John Ham. <laughs> John Ham, he's back. <laughs> and then that guy, oh, like, like that guy, the entire scene, they don't replace his face. Look at him. <laughs> he's just chilling the entire scene. He's just standing there, like, ready to punch. He's on the ground, he's bummed. When I get my chance, I'm gonna punch him. <laughs> <laughs> I like this game. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. The Burly Brawl is still an incredible technical achievement. We still shouldn't amazing. It too much. Respect. Respect. It still gives to us. Mike Diva, thank you for coming out. Thank you so much for having me. You can follow him on Instagram. Yes. At Mike Diva. At Mike Diva. Truly an honor to be here with you guys. Uh, let me just disappear real quick. Just kidding, we're not doing the effects. <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't can we work. at least put like a smoke plume so it looks like something <laughs> happened? Yeah, subscribe. Wow, I can't believe I got my very own Corridor digital merch now in stores, right? CorridorDigital.store, there's a link in the description below. Buying merch is a great way to help support the show and support what we do here at Corridor. And you know what, we actually have free returns, so if for some reason you don't like it, it's absolutely no sweat off your back. Is that the saying? No sweat off your back? Yeah. It's yeah. no sweat off your back. Corridor Digital, it's no sweat off your back. <laughs>